There have been many accounts of angelic and UFO encounters throughout history. Today's science remains puzzled by mysterious happenings that escape our most sophisticated forms of detection. What you will now witness are actual events and experiences encountered by Victoria Lillenquist and documented on film. The live footage and photographs have not been altered or edited in any way. Hello, I'm Victoria Lillenquist. Welcome to my world. Guys, okay, you guys. Come on over this way. It is. It is. Now, Victoria Lillianquist, besides being an expert on UFOs, she can heal with her hands, she says. This is weird. This is weird. Just, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. In 1947, my father picked up this being in the desert. He looked like he was out of the Ten Commandments. He was biblical looking. He got in the car, rode with my father for quite some time. When he got out of the car, he dematerialized in front of my father's eyes. During their drive and their visit, he spoke of many very uh, fascinating things about the universe. On my father's deathbed, he called me to him and he said, do you remember the story about, he called him one of the three Nephites. And I said, of course, everybody's heard you talk about it. And he said, well, the one thing I didn't tell you that I have to tell you before I leave this life is that he told me I was going to have a child. It was going to do something very special. And that's why my parents let me be the visionary and intuitive and prophetic telepathic child that I was. 10 years after he died is when all my film footage started taking place. At the age of five, I had my first experience with an angel. I've always been in touch with um, the other side. So I've been blessed. I, I kind of came in wired like this. And at the age of 13, I had a vision and I saw the Olympics and a cigar-shaped craft in the same vision. And I saw the Olympics in Salt Lake City. The, the energy fields are what create the color. She says she was told back in 1968 that UFOs would come to the Utah Olympics. Now this, is, this was shown to me in 1968 in a vision. Still, it's illegal for any aircraft to fly over Salt Lake during the games without permission. And these F-16 fighters from Hill Air Force Base will enforce that rule. But Ms. Lillianquist says the UFOs can cross dimensions and appear and disappear as they please. So the F-16s won't be any problem for them. Now, Victoria Lillianquist, besides being an expert on UFOs, she can heal with her hands, she says. She's psychic, and, and she has talked to UFOs for a long time. She's put out a music video, DVDs, multi-talented. It's February 21st, 2002. I'm in Salt Lake City for the uh, World Olympics. I'd received transmission of this UFO flyby, and I was up on the foothills above Salt Lake City, looking uh, down towards the Olympic rings. As I sat on the mountaintop, I received transmission that the vehicles would be arriving between 2 and 4 that day. At approximately 2.25, the first flyby came by traveling about a thousand feet above the foothills just north and heading south slightly west of the Olympic rings which were located on the mountain. The first UFO was a, started out as a cigar shaped cylinder shape, a needle shape with scout crafts traveling close around it. I filmed using 
night vision, which reveals much more detail. When I switched to regular vision, the UFO would disappear. I called the TV station, Channel 2, with Rod Decker while I was on the foothills to make the report. At that time, I then received indications of a second flyby, which would occur shortly. At 2.45 p.m., a second cigar-shaped craft did appear with the same small crafts traveling around it. This time I stayed on night vision so I would not lose the craft from view. This was the most exciting moment probably of my whole journey with the encounter of the UFOs and to be able to actually predict that they would come on the day to the time that I predicted where I did uh, over 60 radio interviews worldwide including the BBC around this sighting happening and it did happen. My life has been forever changed since that day. Yes. Two cigar-shaped spacecraft flew overhead the Northeast Mountains near the avenues. <laughs> and Lillian Quest says that the encounter just reaffirms the vision that she had back in 1968 that aliens would come to the games. To walk among us in peace. Um, this is not something airy-fairy X-Files. This is very um, special. It's very spiritual. Did you see it today? Didn't see it, and she dreamed of this in 68. 68. That's a long time ago. Yeah. That's 34 years. She didn't know the games were even going to be here. Yeah. <laughs> hey, we could have gone back to the studio. I feel transmissions coming through all the time, but many times I'm not able to decipher it until I get home, uh, go into a sleep state, and they might go into further uh, definition of the messages given. Mm -hmm. I am actually told earthquakes. I feel earthquakes worldwide within 8 to 12 hours prior to them happening. And I've actually been able to diagnose where they are going to take place on the planet. This footage is of um, a vehicle where you can see the small fleet craft coming out of it. This clip here is July 19th, 2001, when I was staying with family up in Layton, Utah. My encounter actually began very early in the morning, around 2, 2 a.m., and uh, I, usually what happens is they stir me and wake me up, and I looked out the window and watched this um, huge orb, and then I started to see this amazing phenomena coming out of it. You see uh, the small uh, scout crafts and this is how they travel. They they cluster together many times to make what you would think a, a small needle craft and then uh, they start to separate and here you can see they actually start to split into three different orbs and um, quite an amazing sight. I was just totally hypnotized by this by this sighting and then um, I watched over a period of, of time and it just started to shape shift interestingly enough this is very close to Hillfield Air Force Base but um, as you will see as um, we back up you'll see the different um, different planets that are lined up there, you think, oh, it's just a star, but no, it's not. It's really a large orb with these small crafts coming out of it. Our physical eye sometimes can fool us. One of the wonderful things about my camera is I have night vision, and so with that feature on my camera, it made it much more um, accessible to zero in on this phenomena that was transpiring coming out of this orb. There now you can see uh, backing up, you can see how low this is over the mountains. The foothills there actually, uh, it was actually out in Fruit Heights. And, and lining up with the other two, 
what you would think, oh, those are just planets, but they're really not. <laughs> now you see uh, closely another image of a vehicle coming out of the lower right hand portion of this large orb. It's very interesting how it looks like this craft is just being birthed, coming right out of this large orb. They will transmit to me what time, where to go, and, um, and if I can take somebody with me. Just prior to them coming through, and there were very large gold beam ships, and sometimes they're as low as crop dusters, very large, like Goodyear blimps, very large coming through. Oh, yes, these guys. Okay, you guys. Three orbs. It's three orbs. Oh. It's coming right towards us. It is. It is. Hello. We love you. Thank you so much for doing this for all my beautiful brothers and sisters tonight. Okay, look at that. Look at that. Look at it. Look at those two little they look like two little pumpkins traveling together. Uh -huh. Can you see? Just look. I can't move. You've got to move around me. No sound. Look at that. Can you see it? OK. Oh, we love you guys. Oh. Oh, my God. Come over here, right on top of us. There's enough room for all of us in there. Uh, <laughs> the toilet? <laughs> in my visions, they, they actually showed me two worlds. And as we come closer, it's like there's a merging and a blending and then a moving on and the higher consciousness moves forward and the old remains behind and continues to grow and learn their lessons and evolve. But those who are ready to move forward are going to move to um, a higher level, a higher vibration. And it's been shown distinctly in three visions to me how this will take place. And they have told me, Victoria, this is your new home and showed me this this new earth. And then the third vision was given to me actually the weekend that Princess Diana passed away. And as I, and I was, wasn't even like I was awake, but I was being shown the panorama in my bedroom. And they showed me opening up the bedroom doors and looking out. And the world had made the shift. And I saw similar things, but yet it was different. I didn't see the anger and the, the grief and the pain and the sorrow and the gangs and this and that, but I saw a beautiful place. I don't know if it will be as simple as what they showed me in that vision, but it was a very peaceful thing. In August of 2000, I did get some special footage. Please pay special attention you will see the rolling of the earth, the spin. The orb is representing the earth. And then there's footage that shows two orbs side by side, which start to split into dual worlds. These double orbs, to me, represent dual dimensions, as in four dimensions. One of my most profound sightings took place in February 2005. I had seen this large UFO saucer right over the top of my house, so I quickly grabbed my camera and filmed it. 
Interestingly, I did not see what you see now with my physical eye, but only discovered it when I slowed the um, extraction down on my uh, machine. And lo and behold, you see real definition of this UFO craft, which reminds me a lot of the Billy Meyer photographs that have been around for many years. This was a real exciting day for me. So many photographers and UFO people, they, they think they haven't received anything on film just because they don't see it with their physical eye. So it's very important to be able to go into slow motion when you're transferring your film. I still felt there was something more going on, so I panned the sky and you'll see sort of a flash that goes across the sky just above the trees and then in slow motion we've been able to discover uh, image and uh, when we diagnostically studied this there's a lot going on here looking more towards the north now I live in Phoenix I was looking towards uh, Squaw Peak and Camelback and I do end up seeing these two orbs that are flying uh, one above the other. You can see on the right hand side of the screen they appear, then they disappear, then they reappear. And this is another uh, phenomena that transpires. And using night vision it really makes a difference and uh, that's been a very helpful tool for me. We now show a close-up of the lower uh, orb in that sighting. You can see the tail on that thing. A lot of energy going on in the skies that day. Then there's the upper orb, which you now see a close-up of. Things are really accelerating right now and it's a profound time, so this day was a major uh, groundbreaking day for me. We're recognizing each other. We finally do not feel so alone. Please. I believe that I'm an ambassador of the stars, that I'm here to help humanity uh, prepare and wake up and to learn to know and to love their brothers and sisters of other worlds. I was such a unique child. I'd sit in the back of the car as we'd travel on a family vacation. I'd be watching the UFOs doing their blinking their lights and, and uh, I knew they were communicating with me. Always. It was just like you know, I, I felt love. I felt like they were my family. I call them the Brotherhood of Light. I would like to refer to them as that. Uh, my brothers and sisters of the other world. Victoria has this uncanny way of being able to call in the ships. And when I have been with her, they just kind of magically appear as she calls them in by voice, and I think it's vibration also. And sometimes I think not everyone can see them. It takes a certain um, vibration or frequency to be able to see these ships. Victoria is great at being able to do this. She has a lot of film footage, and I think she is um, a galactic um, ambassador to, and part of her mission or her piece is to show this to the world, to bring it to the world, to show that these things do happen um, and to bring through the proof. Um, that is what she does and she's very good at it. Victoria has an incredible voice and I think it's her tone or the resonance in her voice that is able to call in these ships. It's like they can hear it through the dimensions or through the ethers and that's what brings the ships about. Just to reach for the stars.
Victoria films many different kinds of ships. Some of them are light ships, beings that are communicating. Um, I know that Victoria communicates. It's like they're talking in another language, um, a language of light, so to speak, or, or a vibration lights that they're sending to us. Um, I know this seems surreal. Um, however, when it happens in synchronicity and you realize that there's other beings or other people getting the same message from these ships, it, it makes you wonder <laughs> what's happening. And it's confirmation that, yes, we are communicating with them and we are understanding what they're trying to say. I always have uh, your camera handy. I do, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> you, do you always have it with you? Everywhere I you do. Go? I do. Excellent. I, I pretty much don't go anywhere without it because I know that if I do, I might miss something. And I was out feeding the birds. I hear in my ear, look up, there was this orb flying over my yard. I said, stop, I've got to go get my camera. And it actually hovered over my yard while I ran in and got mm -hmm. my camera. So I was pretty excited about this particular um, piece and it was lower than um, the, the airplanes I mean it was just you know just flying mm -hmm. right over my yard mm -hmm. notice it's this orb like with sort of a cap on the top and the bottom there's another clip that shows you a similar uh, point of view which is in Casa Grande a lot of times things that we see we might think well you know maybe it's maybe it's not what I hope it is. And I've had all of my material mm -hmm. analyzed by specialists in the paranormal field. I'm really not an investigator. I'm what you call a contactee. Mm. There are some that you will never convince, and there are others that have had an experience or two, and they're tuned in. Like the old saying, um, for those that believe, no explanation is necessary, and for those that don't believe, uh, no explanation is possible. I was staying in Salt Lake City and had just received a profound vision of seeing water rising and land sinking. I looked out the window and I saw this huge orb. I watched this orb for over an hour and a half. I knew it wasn't a star and it was not a planet. It began to spin, and then it dissolves into a pyramid. It's incredible. You call teleportation beam. Yes. Photographed in your backyard. Yes. Um, and this was in Salt Lake City, Utah, we're looking at right now. Um, what looks like um, something from Star Trek. It definitely does, and uh, there's a lot of blue energy on the left side of the photo, as you can see. Uh, on slides, you can actually see uh, a being standing within the teleportation beam. This is a very interesting sacred site that many groups go and visit because the ancients were known to go back and forth between the worlds at this particular sacred site. As I sat on the bus and I saw these sweet little dogs sitting on the, the, the hillside, and so I shot the photograph appearing when it was developed is this long portal tube. Um, then you see a reversal of it. It's a perfect tunnel. I was at Lake Pell. There was this UFO circling me. I photographed this heavenly presence, and on film, you see a beautiful starburst energy. This is what I feel heaven looks like. It actually represents the blue white energy of the Great White Brotherhood that's spoke of in the Keys of Enoch. It is a, a council of beings that have been working very. Um, conscientiously to help us in our reprogramming and the transformation of this world. My photographs are the physical manifestation of future events. There's special messages that show up.
My little dog was very instrumental in my um, ability to capture other dimensions on film. He would pant and he would see something and he would tell me when to shoot the camera. One night he could see something that I could not see. And when the picture was developed, there on film was an image of a man holding a cross. You could see the hair and the eyes and the nose and his hand. It was a gold cross. I believe that this photograph was given to me, not saying so much that it was Jesus himself, but to help us think about the Christ within each of us. We are in a process of transformation of this dispensation of time, realizing and recognizing and embracing that Christ consciousness within each of us. They are transporters, and in my video footage, many times it looks as if it might be one entity, like there's a face that shows up, and you can actually see a face talking. There's three different vehicles that show up within 15 minutes. The first one you'll see, again, sort of a face and colors. I was sleeping in a living room and just sat up and these vehicles were hanging right over the trees in front of the house. Again, there's transmissions received. You can see the, the face inside this first, uh, this first holographic vehicle. Sometimes I think that perhaps these are projected from a larger mother craft also. Here's the angel. I was born at 4.46 a.m., so I guess they wanted to just sort of let me know that they were thinking of me. Many people call me an earth angel. There's a heartbeat kind of energy, and the, the vehicles, when they fly, they fly on their side, so you can actually see to the right of this uh, image the little cap, sort of like the lid part of what you would think of as a saucer. Just let yourself just breathe in and feel that love. There are great and glorious things coming to this earth if we can hold on long enough. These beautiful experiences that I have have given me a lot of strength to help encourage people to just have hope and faith that we will move into a higher dimension of thinking. The thought forms of humanity must be transformed so that we can evolve as a species, but it begins within ourselves and it's taking our power back. But it's really time for us to give permission to our subconscious and our conscious minds to embrace living in a higher dimensional thought form reality. And now it's going to go into uh, the cube. My little dog was very instrumental in helping me capture other dimensions on film and this image reminded me so much of him was almost like it was a very personalized sighting transmitting to me. Everyone sees a little something uh, different. We all have our own picture of reality. Hopefully, with this phase of the conflict over, things will settle down. We could, uh, for the first time, hopefully and pray so, that this will become a peaceful world. It's, it's always been a dream. <coughs> Hopefully it will become a reality, a beautiful reality. I believe that that is coming and this next mm -hmm. clip mm -hmm. is, a, it's a Chinese symbol and it's, I took this in Sedona and it's, it's hovering just, you know, probably within about a half a mile from the house that I was staying at. And I'm not sure, I don't know Chinese, I need to find out what this symbol means, but I think it might mean peace. This is weird. This is weird. It's a ship. Yeah, there's no blinking lights on there. Did that blink?
many people when I speak they can see uh, Jesus or, or Saint Germain or Babaji actually around me so they are they are very close to me and I honor all the masters mm -hmm. I believe that um, I honor all all religion you know many people they do not understand this material but yet um, everyone should be honored in their own feeling if it brings them joy that is good and there are many tools and many paths to the same destination and one tool may work for one but not another just as the kingdom of heaven lies within us there are many roads to the same destination and we all have different vehicles and tools but we arrive at the initial same destination there are a lot of um, codings and many have felt that there's some Sumerian language that appears in my film footage. Then we go into December 24th, 2000. Again, I'm in Sedona. This is one of my absolute favorite sightings. And you can actually see images, pictographic images appear. My friend and I were standing there. We'd just come back from a, a Christmas service. How many colors are you seeing there? Well, it reminds me of the Christmas lights directly across the street. I mean, I'm seeing blues and reds and greens. And they're, doing, <gasps> they're doing something different. Oh my goodness, different. it just, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, it's turning into a, oh my gosh. I've never seen anything like this. No, I haven't. It's, it's like, it's, it's doing, it's, it's a spinning top. And I'm seeing like almost snowflake, like, like almost spokes. Mm-hmm, yes. Can you see that with yes, your physical eyes? Yes, I can see eyes? it with my physical eyes. Oh, my word. This is amazing tonight. I've never seen it do that spoke thing before. That is really... Come on, do it again, you guys. Speak to us and tell us. Thank you, thank you. Are we in for a good year? Is 2001 gonna be outrageously wonderful? If it is, do the spoke now. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I have never in my life seen one like this. Amazing, amazing. It's like a sparkler. Allow yourself to just receive the encodement that is being transmitted through this footage to you now. As our bodies go through a physical transformation, becoming more, more light, I believe that these images are transmitting the preparation for that. Father, the word in heaven. Tell us now what is to come. Is this the beginning of the magic? Is this the beginning of peace? I see the white dove of peace. Thousand years of peace. A new world of peace, of joy and love, to walk with you and God above. To
great and glorious things are coming. Stay in a place of focusing on what you wish to create for your reality. As we are straddling the worlds right now, it is up to each of us to claim the reality that we want to embrace. Can you walk between the worlds? Can you see the other side? Can you hear the sound of heaven? Feel the joy to take the ride? They say.